Hey guys, this is Henry Gamble. In tonight's free video, I want to take a look at some intraday live trading in the S&P futures. John and Hubert are on their way to Utah for our trading seminar that's going on up there this week. So I will be filling in for videos for them, and I just want to show you guys a couple of the things that I look at throughout the day for my trading. So one of the first ones, and this is something that John has modified for the new version of the book, is taking a look here at the S&P at the open. So you can see right here, I'm looking at the symbol at es.d. The .d symbol will just give us today's current data. It does not take into account the overnight future session data. So what we're looking for is on a five minute chart, what do we have in the way of volume for the first 30 minutes of the session? I've come in here and drawn a horizontal line for the 25,000 share mark. And what we like to see to help us determine whether or not we're going to have a trending or choppy day is that the first five, or excuse me, first six of these five minute bars have more than 25,000 shares traded. So here is the first bar of today's data. You can see that that is over 25,000. The next two are as well, and then we have two that fall below this. So whenever I see this, it's like, okay, I do think this is gonna indicate more of a trendy day because the majority of those bars were over that amount. And then coming over here, the, uh, the two additional bars that we've had that traded more than 25,000 contracts were also strong down moves if we take a look at those. so. That's what I'm looking at to help me establish, you know, one thing. Okay, this may be a lower trending market. So let's go ahead and get this chart out of the way. And as you can see, we had a pretty nice setup here on the 1597 tick chart. We've got a squeeze forming here. The uh, C and B waves are well below zero. And then when the A wave crosses below zero, you could use this, uh, let's see which pivot that is. That's daily S1 as a resistance area. Uh, or for your stops and then of course we hold below the 13 period EMA and that was a pretty good setup now we'll continue watching for these throughout the day and see if there's any additional setups we can take but why do I not want to take a long position here against this pivot and also this weekly support well it has some you know it's partially because of the chart I showed you earlier this morning where we're looking at a downtrending market due to pretty good volume on those down moves now another chart that I like to take a look at is the volume spread. This is also showing us a clear downtrend. So yesterday obviously we have the pro gap up on Tuesday after the three-day weekend and we just continue to plow higher. This trend is something you don't want to fight <clears throat> and this is what I'm looking at the beginning of for today. So we've got the red TTM candlesticks showing us that we're continuing to move lower. That is one thing that keeps me from stepping in on the buy side here not to mention the fact that we don't have a trigger but just trying to establish a, a bias so that's part of it and then let me find my tick chart here so this is another thing that I've been working with on the ticks so this is just a one minute chart with the yellow 13 period EMA and then a one period EMA um, these settings are not set in stone obviously John and Hubert both use different kind of settings but what I'm watching on this is the 13 period EMA is kind of our mean price now in the ticks it's going to be a little bit different than if we were watching a stock but the idea is the same so the mean price stays within the middle of these and then whenever the one period moving average can't get back up through this this is just the downtrending market now you see right here we break back up through this and now we'll see if we can establish some sort of a rally but as opposed to taking any, any kind of a long position like we've been discussing, I would be more apt to wait on this one to get to where we're trading back below the 13 period EMA and see if we can find any additional short setups. So that's what I'm watching for this morning. We'll see if anything else develops and we will fill you guys in on that as it unfolds. So now a few minutes have passed by and as you can see we're starting to get a squeeze fire off on the 5 minute chart and something else I like to do is come over here and take a look at our squeeze radar. As you can see here, I've got the S&P on several different time frames. And taking a look at this, this would be one of those situations where you could possibly turn a day trade into a swing trade. So what I'm looking at is we've got the 377 and 987 tick charts in a squeeze. We also have the 5 minute in a squeeze and then the 30 minute. Ideally, you could take something like this, roll it into the 5 minutes, and then roll that into the 30. Now it doesn't always work out quite that clean, but in this case if we come over here and I'm going to go ahead and change this. So now we've got the 987 tick squeeze that we can also use to help guide us into this entry. 
So while we do have these two pivot levels that are acting as support currently, you know, the idea is typically that the first time it holds, so you fade it, and then the second time you go with it. So stepping in here, we can see that we've got that squeeze that's about to fire off short, so I'm going to go ahead and sell one at the market. Now this is a simulated account because I'm not trading under John's account and I uh, am focusing strictly on options right now but I do follow the futures market and follow these setups as well so just to be clear on that now now we've been filled on our short position so now we'll see if we can get this 987 tick chart to roll over into the five minute and then see if there's any sort of selling later on into the end of the day if we make a reference to our tick chart we see exactly what I was talking about whenever we um, were looking at the setup before. So we don't want to take the long position whenever this crosses back above zero, but here we get the healthy cross of the uh, one period below the 13 period, and then that gives us some additional downside pressure. If we take a look back over at the volume spread real quick, we can see that this move is being confirmed as we continue to break down on the five minute chart and we have yet to see a single cyan or blue bullish TTM trend bar so we've got our entry and we'll follow this one as it unfolds so now the S&P's have continued to sell off as you can see on both of these charts we've broken through the weekly support that we had and this is kinda of what I was talking about so the 987 fires short and actually there's one thing I can show you here so working with multiple time frames, this is a handy tip. If you right click on your chart and go down to drawing and then pointer tracking, and in this case I'm just going to enable it for this workspace. When I have that selected, I can now take a look at this and say, okay, whenever the squeeze fired here on the 1590s, or excuse me, the 987, what did it look like on the five minute? And in this case, they both pretty much fired together. The five minute preceded that one just slightly but that's a handy tool for comparing these sorts of entries so now that we've got the entry on the 987 I'll continue to watch it now whenever we lose momentum then I'll reference my larger time frame here on the five minute and see how it's doing that's how I'll continue to manage the trade and we'll follow it accordingly okay so now we have two reversal bars here in the 987 tick this is technically the end of the signal for this time frame but then if we come over here and take a look at the five minute chart we can see that this squeeze is still asserting strong downward pressure we have the A, B and C wave is now completely below zero and this is now the time frame that I've got a little bit of a cushion on the entry from we've got about a point of cushion in it so now I'm basically in the five minute squeeze with a point of cushion and we'll see how far we can take this one so we continue to have downward pressure in the five minute squeeze but there are a couple things that we need to make note of if we take a look here at the ticks this is a substantial spike above zero Now, the spike is not so much we're worried about it's if we start hanging out back up above here then we may need to reconsider this position so i'm watching that and then also keeping an eye on this we're holding below the mean price or the thirteen period ema here and then also uh, now using these weekly levels and daily pivots as resistance but that is what we'll be following okay so now if we take a look at the five minute chart once again we can see that this squeeze has now lost its momentum we've had two bars that closed opposite of the direction we took the squeeze and we're also trading back up above the 13 period EMA so I will go ahead and flatten this position So it took a little bit of a loss on that one, but that is just an example of how we can use these uh, smaller time frame squeezes to roll over into bigger time frames. And while that doesn't always work out, it's one of the better strategies that we can use when you have multiple contracts. So for the example, I was just using a single contract, but if you had two, you could have taken one off when the 987 tick squeeze was exhausted and then try to ride the other on the five minute squeeze. So I hope you guys find that helpful. If you have any other questions, please let us know. And John, you should be back for trade the markets tomorrow.